What did the Greeks once speculate about the air? The Greek philosopher Anaximander, 610 to 546 B. C. E., speculated correctly that air wasn't just nothing, but, in fact, was made of something. However, he went on to suggest that all matter came from air, which could be changed into different states of matter. This idea actually has some basis in truth, since, for example, water can be precipitated out of humid air, and water can evaporate into air. Anaximander just got a little too carried away and took this idea to extremes by saying air could also become fire and a lot of other things. Does lightning ever strike twice in the same place? Lightning can and often does strike in the same place twice. Since lightning bolts head for the highest and most conductive point. That point often receives multiple strikes of lightning in the course of a storm so stay away from something that has already been struck by lightning. Tall buildings, such as the Empire State Building, often receive numerous lightning strikes during a storm. How do I find financial aid to study meteorology? Other than contacting your university's meteorology department and its financial aid office. A good place to look for scholarships, fellowships, and internships is the American Meteorological Society. The National Council of Industrial Meteorologists also provides stipends to undergraduates. Finally. The U.S. Navy and Air Force both offer programs in meteorology for those who attend. The Reserve Officers Training Corps, ROTC, in college, and then go to officer training school. Your education is then paid for by the military. How dangerous are heat waves to people? Heat waves are responsible for some of the most lethal weather disasters in history. In fact, in the United States the heat wave of 1980 caused more deaths, between 10,000 and 15,000, depending on sources than the 1900 hurricane that killed between 8,000 and 12,000 people in Galveston, Texas. More recently, in 2003 a heat wave in Europe struck, killing somewhere between 35,000 and 50,000 people. The heat had a particularly lethal effect on the people of France where over 14,800 people died of heat-related problems, mostly heat stroke. In France, fewer people have air conditioning in their homes. And many elderly living in apartments succumb to the suffocating temperatures. How unhealthy is snow shoveling?
heart attack rates increase sharply during the winter months in northern climates. Because people who are older or are not very healthy get too much exercise shoveling snow. Because more men than women tend to shovel snow. About three-fourths of winter fatalities after snowstorms are men. 50% of these men, too, are over 60 years of age. What is meteorology? Meteorology is the scientific study of the weather and more specifically, how changes in the weather may be forecasted. Does wind have a lot of energy that could help reduce the need for fossil fuels? If people could harvest all the energy in the Earth's wind through the use of windmills. For instance, it would generate about 3.6 million kilowatts of power. Enough to supply the energy needs of 3.6 billion Americans. Since Americans use much more energy than most people on the planet. It is safe to say that the energy needs of the nearly 7 billion people on Earth could be met by wind power alone. Unfortunately, it would be impossible to extract all of this energy. Wind turbines have become economically feasible. But we could never place them over every land and sea surface on the planet. If neutrinos are so elusive, how do scientists observe them striking Earth? It is possible to detect neutrinos from space by their very rare interactions with matter here on Earth, but not with conventional telescopes. The first effective neutrino detector was set up in 1967 deep underground in the Homestake Gold Mine near Leeds, South Dakota. There, the American scientists Ray Davis, Jr., 1914, and John Bockhall, 1934 to 2005 set up a tank filled with 100,000 gallons of nearly pure perchlorate used as dry cleaning fluid and monitored the liquid for very rare neutrino interaction events other experiments have since used other substances such as pure water for neutrino detections What is a London Killer Fog? Despite its history of air pollution dating back centuries, Londoners seemed slow to learn from their mistakes. Air pollution from coal burning continued into the 1960s. The sulfur dioxide combined with London's famous fog, with the result being acid fog. In 1952, the thick fog became so dense that people could not see to walk or drive. Influenza, bronchitis and pneumonia cases skyrocketed, and about 4,000 people died and another 100. 000 were sickened that year from illnesses related to this killer fog.
What were the glacial and interglacial periods in the last ice age? In the last ice age, and in all ice ages, there were cycles of glacial. When ice covered the land, and interglacial, relatively warmer temperatures, times. Corresponding with these times, the glaciers advanced or retreated. Scientists believe the last ice age also called the Pleistocene ice age had eight cycles. The following lists these stages for North America, stage names for Northern and Central Europe differ. What is the connection between earthquakes and plate tectonics? Only the lithosphere has the strength and brittle behavior to fracture in an earthquake. And as lithospheric plate boundaries push, pull apart, or grind against each other, earthquakes occur. In 1969, scientists published the locations of all earthquakes that occurred from 1961 to 1967. They discovered most earthquakes. And volcanoes, too, they later learned, occurred in narrow belts around the world. Thus, it is now known that areas with frequent earthquakes and volcanoes help define the plate boundaries. Does the air have tides? Strangely enough, yes. Just as with water, the atmosphere can be affected by the moon's tug on the earth. So that air pressure can change in air masses daily. The changes are very small, though about 1 or 2 millibars n. These changes are mostly seen only in equatorial zones. What happened in the 1940s and 1950s that gave hope to the science of numerical weather prediction? Hungarian-American mathematician John von Neumann, 1903-1957, devised a forerunner of the modern computer. That could make the rapid calculations needed to predict the weather using the numerical forecasting method. Next, Princeton University meteorologist Jules Charney, 1917-1981. Having studied Richardson's earlier failure, wrote revised formulas in 1946 that could be used for weather prediction with the help of von Neumann's computer. With this background foundation in place, in 1950 the first successful weather forecast using the numerical method was completed in April, 1950, by the ANIAC computer at Maryland's Aberdeen Proving Ground. An ongoing weather forecast service was then begun in 1955, using an IBM computer funded by the National Weather Service, and the U.S. Navy and Air Force. If I stand next to a tall object, will I be safe from lightning? People get this idea from the concept that lightning rods on top of buildings. 
are designed to attract lightning bolts and protect the building from damage. Actually, standing next to a tall object like a telephone pole or tree is no guarantee you won't be hit by the lightning stroke. Lightning will often hit the ground right next to a taller object. How were the first high-altitude photographs of clouds taken? During World War II, cameras were mounted aboard some of Germany's V-2 rockets to take pictures of cloud patterns. The success of these efforts inspired meteorologists to plan for weather satellites. What is a nuclear winter? Scientists Richard Turco and Carl Sagan made the world cognizant of the effects of a global nuclear war in the early 1980s. And Sagan published a popular book on the subject, The Nuclear Winter. In 1983, while most people were already terrified of the nuclear arms race that had been going on between the United States and the Soviet Union since the 1950s. The idea that ever major city on Earth could be obliterated by atomic and hydrogen bombs was just the beginning. Sagan and Turco showed that it wouldn't even take all of the then 50. 000 nuclear warheads to kick up enough dust and debris to block out the sun's warmth. Clouds of irradiated dust would be blown into the stratosphere, where they would circle the planet for months. Plunging us into an artificial winter that would destroy crops and lead to a global famine. Since the publication of the nuclear winter, many scientists have come to believe a similar scenario could happen if a large asteroid hit the planet. Indeed, this is one theory about how the dinosaurs may have become extinct 65 million years ago. Another possible cause of a nuclear winter would be planet-wide volcanic eruptions. Which some scientists theorize led to a snowball earth hundreds of millions of years ago. Actually, when volcanoes are involved it would perhaps be more accurate to call these volcanic winters. How are different types of climates classified? The German-born, Russian climatologist Oladimir Koppen 1846-1940, developed a climate classification system that is still used today, albeit with some modifications. He classified climates into six categories, tropical humid, dry, mid-latitude, severe mid-latitude, polar, and highland. He also created subcategories for five of these classifications. His climate map is often found in geography texts and atlases. In 1931, American geographer and climatologist Charles Warren Thornthwaite 1899-1963, published the climates of North America, according to a new classification. Which takes into more thorough consideration how differences in geography affect local climates.
Is Moscow, Russia, colder than Minneapolis, Minnesota? Moscow is at a latitude of 55 degrees 45 minutes, while Minneapolis is at 44 degrees 53 minutes. Nevertheless, they have similar climates. Both cities experience mean January temperatures of about 14 degrees Fahrenheit minus 10 degrees Celsius. While Julys are about 66 degrees Fahrenheit 18.9 degrees Celsius in Moscow and 74 degrees Fahrenheit 23.3 degrees Celsius in Minneapolis on average. Which you? S state benefits from very favorable wind conditions. The state of Hawaii enjoys a climate where ocean breezes naturally cool the islands. Which would otherwise be quite hot because of the state's tropical location. Because of these ocean breezes, temperatures rarely exceed 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Celsius, and the evenings are relatively cool, even during the summer. What is numerical weather prediction? Numerical weather prediction or numerical forecasting is the science that believes that weather forecasting is possible if one has a thorough knowledge of the laws of physics and also knows the current state of the weather. Proposed by a group of Norwegian scientists collectively known as the Bergen School. The idea was that air behaves much like a fluid. And that it therefore adheres to the hydrodynamical equations that liquids like water do. Knowing the current state of the weather is vital, and so numerical forecasting relies heavily. On having detailed weather reports from multiple locations before predictions can be made. Once this is available, mathematical formulas are applied to the weather's current state. Based on the principles of thermodynamics, the Boyle's Law, Newtonian physics, and so on. What is a triple point? The triple point is the temperature at which a substance can exist. In equilibrium in all three of its states, gas, liquid, and solid. For pure water, the triple point at an air pressure of 4.58 mm of mercury is 32.018 degrees Fahrenheit 0.01 degrees Celsius. The term triple point, however, can also refer to the spot where an occluded front meets a warm front. How do hurricanes get named? The United States introduced the naming system in 1950 in which each hurricane is given a name in alphabetical order. In 1953, the naming convention was taken over by the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, which selected names from library sources and finalized lists during international meetings. 
until 1978, all the names were female, but this practice ended with the 1979 hurricane season. And now names alternate between male and female. The names are all either English, Spanish, or French in origin. The names are chosen to reflect the cultures and languages found in the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Hawaiian regions. When a tropical storm with rotary action and wind speeds above 39 miles, 63 kilometers per hour develops, the National Hurricane Center near Miami, Florida. Selects a name from one of the six listings for Region 4, Atlantic and Caribbean area. Letters Q, U, X, Y, and Z are not included because of the scarcity of names beginning with those letters. What are Halcyon Days? This term is often used to refer to a time of peace or prosperity. Among sailors, it is the two-week period of calm weather before and after the shortest day of the year. Approximately December 21st. The phrase is taken from Halcyon. The name the ancient Greeks gave to the kingfisher. According to legend, the Halcyon built its nest on the surface of the ocean and was able to quiet the winds while its eggs were hatching. How can a solar eclipse influence the weather? During a solar eclipse, the moon casts a dark shadow, called the umbra, onto the Earth's surface, as well as a lighter shadow called the penumbra. The umbra can be about 170 miles, 274 kilometers, in diameter, darkening the sky and cooling the air just as if the sun were setting. Temperatures have been known to drop many degrees during a solar eclipse. Especially during a total eclipse. For example, in Baja, California, the temperature dropped from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. 32 degrees Celsius to 23 degrees Celsius, on July 11, 1991 because of an eclipse. The effect, however, is short-lived, as total eclipses rarely last more than seven minutes. And specific locations on the planet only experience them once every four centuries or so. What are the different size categories for hailstones? In the United States, the following terms are used to describe the size of hailstones in weather reports. The actual sizes of the hailstones often don't match up to their supposed similes. What incident do many literary scholars believe inspired William Shakespeare to write The Tempest? He Tempest is considered to be the last play completed by 
The famous British playwright William Shakespeare, 1564-1616. It is a mystical, romantic play about shipwreck sailors who find themselves on an island inhabited by good and evil creatures. Many scholars believe it was inspired by the story of the Sea Venture. A ship that sank near the Bahamas in 1609 because of a hurricane. The captain's decision to crash the ship on a reef resulted in his saving 150 of his crew. Has an asteroid ever hit Earth? Yes. In fact, the extinction of the dinosaurs is believed to have resulted from an asteroid. Striking the Earth near the shoreline of what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. There is also speculation that, 13,000 years ago, a comet or large asteroid smashed into the planet and wiped out the Native American Clovis civilization, as well as mastodons, mammoths, and other large animal species that once roamed North America. This sort of impact is, of course, extremely rare. Today, astronomers estimate that small asteroids approach Earth and burn up in the atmosphere at a rate of about two or three a year. In October 2008, scientists were excited to have accurately predicted that a small asteroid 2008 TC3, measuring about 15 feet 4.5 meters, across, would enter the atmosphere. It was the first time that NASA's near-Earth object program had successfully anticipated such an event. How did the Inca civilization experiment with climate? in the Urubamba Valley in Peru, in a city called Moray, is the remains of a great amphitheater-like terrace system. Archaeologists and scientists now believe that this was a great agricultural laboratory, where each area of the terrace exhibited completely different climates. Allowing the Incas to experiment with different climates and growing techniques. Is air really thin? Like anything else, thin is a relative term. Compared to the vacuum of space, air is very dense. But compared to a chunk of marble, or even a bottle of water, it is very thin indeed. For something in a gaseous state, air is actually quite thick. At sea level, molecules in the air are spaced only about one millionth of an inch apart. What are the National Ambient Air Quality Standards? Part of the Clean Air Act, the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, NACs, are set values that are considered the maximum limits before air becomes too unhealthy to breathe safely. Industries that produce pollutants must adhere to these standards or else face 
fines and other penalties from the federal government. The standards are listed below. What is SODAR? If LiDAR is light radar, then you can probably guess that SODAR is sound radar. SODAR stands for sound detection and ranging. It is different from sonar in that sonar uses sound waves traveling through water. Whereas SODAR is detecting the reflection of sound waves through the air. By calculating the Doppler shift of sound waves, SODAR can be used for evaluating wind speeds and direction. As well as temperature inversions and other types of turbulence. How much energy does one bolt of lightning contain? A bolt of lighting contains enough energy to light a 100 watt light bulb for 3 months. To be more technical, each stroke of lightning has about 30,000 amps and 1 million volts of power, on average. Some super bolts can have up to 300,000 amps of power. What is kyanophobia? Kyanophobia is a fear of snow. Do loud noises trigger avalanches? The notion that making loud noises, such as shouting or clapping one's hands, near dangerous snow conditions will trigger an avalanche is an old myth. Actually, it would take a tremendous sound. Such as a nearby sonic boom where an avalanche is about to occur anyway, for noise to make a difference. In 90% of cases, avalanches are precipitated by a person's or person's weight. Or the weight of a snowmobile or other machine, on top of unstable snow. What is a hurricane? A hurricane is a tropical storm that has winds of 74 miles per hour or more that forms in the Atlantic Basin. Hurricanes typically occur in the North Atlantic and Caribbean Sea during the months of July, August, and September. When warm surface ocean temperatures exceed 80 degrees Fahrenheit 26.5 degrees Celsius, providing energy that feeds into the storm. Sea water evaporates into the air, creating clouds, while the Coriolis effect causes the clouds to rotate. For a hurricane to develop, there must not be a lot of difference. In wind speeds in the upper and lower elevations of the storm. If there is a big difference in these speeds. The resulting wind shear will cause the hurricane to become unstable, with clouds and winds opposing each. Other rather than working together in a gigantic swirl that increases in speed. 
hurricanes do not tend to generate close to the equator, within 5 degrees latitude. Because the Coriolis effect is stronger farther away from the equator. And also because they need a low pressure area that is not close to the equator. What are the stages of a thunderstorm? Thunderstorms have three stages, cumulus, mature, and dissipation. In the cumulus stage, warm, humid air near the ground is pushed upwards by strong thermals. Or by the collision of air masses coming in from several directions at once. As this moist air rises, it cools and the heat that is released enters the surrounding air causing convection that, in turn, causes more air to rise. A loop that feeds off itself causes a rapid increase in cloud formation. Temperature differences between lower and higher altitude, and rainfall. The storm reaches its second stage, the mature stage. When air has reached its cap and is not rising any farther. At this point, cumulonimbus clouds become cumulonimbus incus, thunderheads. With water droplets freezing at the top, thawing into rain as they descend. As the mixture of water, ice, and wind becomes more turbulent, an electrical charge builds up. Aligning the ice crystals within the clouds until a bolt of lightning is discharged. This happens repeatedly until the storm weakens in the dissipation stage. What was the most important weather book to follow Meteorologica? Aristotle's student Theophrastus of Ersus, c. 372-287 BCE, continued his mentor's study of weather with his On Weather Signs. A book that became the last word on weather. It was consulted all the way through about the 12th century when it was still used by scholars of the Byzantine Empire. As a predictor of weather, the book strove to describe how to tell when rain, wind, and storms were coming. Theophrastus's version of meteorology, though, was still a mix of well-reasoned observation and superstition. How does the United States compare with China and Russia on energy use and production? As of 2007, the United States gets 50% of its energy from coal and in 2006, was burning three times as much oil, 21 million barrels, a day as China. America burns slightly less natural gas annually than Russia, which uses 604 billion cubic meters per year. What is the Bruckner cycle? The Bruckner cycle refers to the idea that periods of unusually wet years are then followed by drier than normal years in a cycle that alternates about every 35 years. 
though it may fluctuate by as little as 20 and as much as 50 years. It is named after German geographer and meteorologist Eduard Bruckner, 1862-1927. The cycle is also related to colder and warmer years. Bruckner, who was also very interested in climate change and glacier advancement and retreats, based his theory on his research into glaciers and tree rings. Because there is so much variation in these cycles, though, climatologists have become much more interested in both the shorter term and longer term changes in climate. Are hailstones always round? Usually, hailstones are round or lumpy round little ice balls. Sometimes, however, they can be oblong or have protruding spikes. Who was the first person to classify clouds? The French naturalist Jean Lamarck, 1744-1829, was the first to propose a system for classifying clouds in 1802. His work, however, did not receive wide recognition. A year later, the Englishman Luke Howard, 1772-1864, developed a cloud classification system that has been generally accepted and is still in use today. In Howard's system, he distinguished clouds according to their general appearance. Heap clouds versus layer clouds, and their height above ground. Latin names and prefixes are used to describe these characteristics. The shape names are cirrus, curly or fibrous, stratus, layered, and cumulus, lumpy or piled. The prefixes denoting height are co, high clouds with bases above 20,000 feet 6,000 meters, and alto. Mid-level clouds from 6,000 to 20,000 feet 1,800 to 6,000 meters. There is no prefix for low clouds. Nimbo and Nimbus is also added as a name or prefix to indicate that the cloud produces precipitation. What is the mission of NASA's Aura satellite? Launched on July 15th. 2004, the Aura satellite is on a mission to monitor changes in the Earth's atmosphere, particularly the ozone layer. Instruments on the satellite measure the chemistry and dynamics of the upper atmosphere. The data it will gather will be used to predict alterations in air quality and climate change. What are some of the worst floods in history caused by inclement weather? Not all lethal floods in recorded history have been caused by bad weather. For example, seawall failures in the Netherlands have. On several occasions, caused tragic floods that killed thousands. The table below, though, lists some of the worst weather-related floods in history.
What are some other unusual events that saw a sudden increase in temperature in the United States? Extreme shifts in weather patterns, such as when a strong warm or cold front moves through a region, have been known to cause rapid changes in temperature of 40 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes in periods lasting less than an hour. One of the most stunning examples occurred in Great Falls, Montana. On January 12, 1980, when Chinook winds carried warm air into the city. A hydrologist for the National Weather Service reported that over a period of just seven minutes the temperature in Great Falls rose from minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit minus 35.5 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Fahrenheit minus 9.4 degrees Celsius. A change of 47 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22 degrees Celsius, which was a record, at least in the United States. Previously, Montana held the record when on December 1, 1896, the temperature changed by 36 degrees Fahrenheit in seven minutes in the town of Kip. It rose a total of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 37.7 degrees Celsius, that same day over just a few hours. While not occurring over such an impressively short period of time, there have been many other incidents. In the United States where abrupt temperature changes have happened within a relatively short time frame. Below are some other remarkable temperature changes. What is Indian summer? The term Indian summer dates back to at least 1778 and may relate to the way native Americans availed themselves of the nice weather to increase their winter food supplies. It refers to a period of pleasant, dry, warm days from middle to late autumn that usually occur after the first killing frost. What are the two forms of cloud to ground lightning? Cloud to ground, CG, strokes of lightning come in negative and positive forms. Negative CGS, which make up about 95% of all such lightning strokes, occur when the ground becomes positively charged. A positive CG does the opposite, and the ground becomes negatively charged. Positive CGS tend to have more power and longer strike time, thus. They are more likely to cause damage and are blamed for starting more forest fires. What is transportation forecasting? Most people are probably familiar with this specialty in forecasting. Which helps warn car drivers and truckers that road conditions could be hazardous. It also helps prepare local governments to clear streets and freeways. Spray road salt or sand, and have law enforcement and emergency personnel ready for emergencies. On the business level, weather forecasts can warn shipping companies. For instance, 
not to ship perishable products in unrefrigerated or unheated trucks. Shipments by rail also need to be ready for unfavorable weather conditions. Some larger companies rely on private forecasting firms to provide them with timely advisories. What are the two major characteristics of volcanic eruptions? A volcano can experience violent eruptions or less explosive, more effusive eruptions that produce wide-ranging lava flows. In general, the eruptive characteristics of a volcano are based on the silica and water content of the magma. How is a wet bulb thermometer constructed? The basic design of a wet bulb thermometer is to insert a thermometer into a reservoir of pure, distilled water. Wrapped around the thermometer is a piece of cloth, usually muslin. That acts as a wick, drawing water up through the reservoir via capillary action. As the moisture in the cloth above the surface of the water evaporates, it draws heat from the thermometer. Thus lowering the temperature until the surrounding air reaches a point of saturation. A dry bulb thermometer is simply a regular thermometer that is not dipped into the water reservoir or wrapped in cloth. What is a Siberian Express? This term describes outbreaks of Arctic air that are severely cold. They descend from northern Canada and Alaska to other parts of the United States. What are some cloud-to-space forms of lightning that are not considered to be true lightning? There are four types of electrical phenomena that have been observed that are not really lightning but still involve fascinating atmospheric displays called transient luminous events or TLEs, they are usually seen during storms. They are sometimes called cloud-to-space lightning, though they do not actually originate within clouds. The first scientific paper on these phenomena was published in 1886, but scientists were not very interested in the subject until more recently, as photographic images became increasingly available. One sprites, often reddish lights appearing above thunderstorms for very brief periods of time. Sprites look kind of like jellyfish, they have a blob of light on top and numerous tendrils descending downward. Sprites can shoot 55 to 60 miles, about 90 to 95 kilometers up into the atmosphere, reaching the ionosphere, and extend 100 miles, 161 kilometers, across. They are very difficult to see, and for that reason were not reliably recorded until the 1980s. Two blue jets, blue lightning that emerges from the tops of thunderstorm clouds at speeds of about 62 miles. 
100 kilometers per hour. Meteorologists still do not fully understand what causes blue jets. Three elves, a short name for a very long-winded description, elves are emissions of light and very low frequency. VLF, perturbations from electromagnetic pulse, EMP, sources. Appearing as giant rings that expand up to 200 miles, 320 kilometers, in diameter. Elves exist in the upper atmosphere at elevations of 55 to 60 miles, 90 to 95 kilometers. Even more short-lived than sprites, they last about one one-thousandth of a second. Four tigers, first observed on January 20, 2003. This newest atmospheric light phenomenon has still not been adequately explained by scientists. Tiger stands for transient ionospheric glow emission in red. And were first observed with the use of an infrared video camera over the Indian Ocean by Elon Ramon. An Israeli astronaut aboard the space shuttle Columbia, which later exploded, killing the crew. The tigers that Ramon observed occurred as bright flashes when there was no thunderstorm activity nearby. How did the last ice age begin and end? Approximately 1.7 million years ago, the beginning of the Quaternary Period. Pleistocene Epoch, geologists believe the plains of North America cooled. As a result, large ice sheets began to advance south from the Hudson Bay area of Canada and eastward from the Rocky Mountains. These ice sheets advanced and retreated many times toward the end of the Pleistocene epoch in intervals lasting from 10,000 to 100,000 years. This most recent ice age ended about 10,000 years ago. When the ice retreated to its present polar positions. Currently, the Earth is nearing the end of an interglacial, warmer period, meaning that another ice age might be due in a few thousand years. What is a brown cloud? The brown haze suspended over cities such as Los Angeles, Mexico City, and Cairo, Egypt, is sometimes referred to as a brown cloud. Why do meteorologists refer to the Reynolds number when talking about turbulence? The Reynolds number is a mathematical result computed by calculating the ratio of inertial to viscous forces. Put in more understandable English, it measures how fluids move through an area of defined diameter. It is named after English physicist and engineer Osborne Reynolds, 1842-1912. Who was interested in how water flows through rivers and in waves and tides? However, it can also be used in terms of air flowing through the atmosphere. And thus has applications in meteorology, 
where Reynolds's formula is used to calculate air turbulence. What causes a tornado to dissipate? Just as the formation of tornadoes is not well understood, neither are the reason for why they disappear. One theory is that when colder air begins to flow out of the storm the mesocyclone at the center of the storm becomes surrounded by cooler air the tornado is robbed of sufficient energy and loses power. However, this is not a hard and fast rule. And cool air outflows have been observed that actually are followed by tornado formation. What is the ideal relative humidity that is the most comfortable for people? A humidity level between 30 and 60 percent is generally considered comfortable for human beings. While keeping humidity below 50 percent has the added benefit of keeping dust mites under control in homes. Lower humidities tend to lead to dry or cracked skin, itching, and even respiratory problems, and higher humidity causes perspiration to be less. Effective in controlling body temperature, which makes people feel hotter. In northern climates, where winter dries out the air, humidity can drop below 5%, which is comparable to the humidity levels of a desert. To what professional societies and organizations should a meteorologist belong? Most meteorologists in the United States participate as active members of the American Meteorological Society. Those specifically interested in the atmospheric sciences often also join the American Geophysical Union, which is headquartered in Washington, D.C. Meteorologists specializing in forecasting can join the National Weather Association for its benefits. The NWA is also concerned with the operational aspects of meteorology. What makes the Historia Naturalis important in the history of meteorology? The Historia Naturalis was written by Pliny the Elder, 23-79 c. e. and contained, among other scientific observations an ambitious survey of weather conditions from Rome, Greece, Egypt, and Babylon. As with the earlier Meteorologica and on weather signs, though, it was still an inaccurate mix of objective science and myth-inspired superstition. How far away can thunder be heard? Thunder is the crash and rumble associated with lightning. It is caused by the explosive expansion and contraction of air heated by the stroke of lightning. This results in sound waves that can be heard easily 6 to 7 miles, 9.7 to 11.3 kilometers away. 
Occasionally such rumbles can be heard as far away as 20 miles, 32.2 kilometers. The sound of great claps of thunder is produced when intense heat and the ionizing effect of repeated lightning occurs in a previously heated air path. This creates a shock wave that moves at the speed of sound. What is humidifier fever? If you do not clean your humidifier according to the manufacturer's recommendations, bacteria and mold may begin to grow on it, which could make you sick. Also, distilled water, not tap water, should be used in a humidifier because dissolved minerals in tap water can cause a fine white powder to blow in your home that can also encourage germs to spread. Though a variety of illnesses, ranging from allergic reactions to the common cold, could develop as a result. If they stem from a poorly maintained humidifier they might all be classified as humidifier fever. How much drinkable fresh water is there on Earth? Only 2.59% of all the water on our planet is fresh water. However, much of that water is now polluted, and hydrologists and environmentalists estimate that only about 1% of the planet's total water supply is clean enough to drink. Who came up with the idea for volunteer weather observers? That credit goes to American physicist and mathematician Joseph Henry, 1797-1878. The second president of the National Academy of Sciences who was also the first secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Henry made advances in the area of electromagnetics, which led to his study in electromagnetic relays. Which, finally, was the basis for Samuel Morse's, 1791-1872, invention of the telegraph. While secretary at the Smithsonian, it dawned on Henry that the wonderful new telegraph could be used to link together weather observers throughout the country who could then relay the information to Washington, D.C. This became the network of volunteer observers that we have today. How do sunspots affect weather? While scientists still debate how important or significant sunspot activity is on our weather and climate, there are some theories. In the short term, solar flares and winds do not influence weather to any significant extent. Because the magnetosphere and upper atmosphere are more than capable of absorbing their energy. Over the long term, however, there could be consequences if the sun experienced a prolonged or permanent change in activity. Fluctuations in solar activity typically occur in the ultraviolet wavelengths. And UV radiation is known to affect the Earth's upper atmosphere. 
astronomers and some meteorologists speculate that X-rays, too, resulting from sunspots and flares could, over time, change the amount of nitric oxide. No, in the upper atmosphere, and this would have an effect on the ozone. Sunspot activity can result in more cosmic rays penetrating the atmosphere, which, in turn, spur on cloud formation and increase precipitation. More recently, there have been theories that significant decreases in solar activity predict oncoming ice ages on our planet. For example, during the Little Ice Age that lasted from the 15th through the 18th centuries. A period including the Maunder Minimum, sunspot activity was at a low point. Other minimums, the Dalton Minimum 1790 and Sporer Minimum 1420-1530. Also coincide with colder weather. What is a thunderstorm? Thunderstorms are localized atmospheric phenomena that produce heavy rain. Thunder and lightning, and sometimes hail. They are formed in cumulonimbus clouds, big and bulbous, that rise many miles into the sky. Most of the southeastern United States has over 40 days of thunderstorm activity each year. And there are about 100,000 thunderstorms across the country annually. What is convergence? Convergence occurs when air masses approach each other from different directions. As the masses collide, air pressure between them goes up, which causes air to flow upwards. How large can hailstones become? The average hailstone is about one quarter inch, 0.64 centimeter, in diameter. However, hailstones weighing up to 7.5 pounds, 3.4 kilograms, are reported to have fallen in Hyderabad state in India in 1939. Although scientists think these huge hailstones may be several stones that partly melted and stuck together. On April 14, 1986, hailstones weighing 2.5 pounds, 1 kilogram, were reported to have fallen in the Gopalgang district of Bangladesh. There was also a report of a hailstone weighing 4.5 pounds, 2.04 kilograms, in Germany. The current claim to fame for largest hailstone found in the United States was one that was measured to have a circumference of 18.75 inches, 47.625 centimeters, that fell in Aurora, Nebraska. In June 2003, before that, the record was held by a 17.5 inch, 44.45 centimeter, stone found in Coffeyville, Kansas, in September 1970. When it comes to weight, however, the Coffeyville stone was 1.67 pounds, 0.76 kilograms, 
while the Aurora Hailstone was a fluffier 1.3 pounds, 0.59 kilograms. Who should be credited with inventing weather radar? No one person decided to use radar for weather forecasts. With the technology already in place, it was simply adapted to this purpose when Experiments in Britain and the United States showed that radio waves bounced off clouds. Radar was first used to specifically obtain weather data in 1949. But it was not until the mid-1950s that a weather station using radar technology was established in the United States. This happened after the eastern seaboard was hit by two vicious hurricanes in 1954 and 1955 the U.S. Weather Bureau was then authorized by Congress to create a national weather radar grid. And so the weather surveillance radar, WSR-57, was founded in 1957. WSR systems used vacuum tubes and other technologies that were becoming outdated by the late 1970s. Despite the fact that vacuum tubes were in short supply, and other parts had to be hand machined in. Order to keep the weather system running, Congress did not approve replacing the system until the 1990s. What was the greatest natural disaster in United States history? The greatest natural disaster occurred when a hurricane struck Galveston, Texas, on September 8, 1900, and killed 8,000 to 12,000 people. However, the costliest national disaster to date was Hurricane Katrina, which hit the Gulf Coast in August 2005, killing 1,800 people and causing $100 billion in damages. Who first proposed the idea of ice ages? Several scientists over the centuries came close to proposing the idea of ice ages. Scottish naturalist James Hutton, 1726-1797, observed strangely shaped glacial boulders. Erratics, near Geneva, Switzerland. Based on this, he published his theory in 1795 that alpine glaciers were more extensive in the past. In 1824, Jens S. Mark 1763-1839, proposed that past glaciation had occurred on a much larger continental scale. But the most persuasive argument for ice ages came in 1837, when Swiss-American geologist Louis Agassiz 1807 to 1873, gave his now famous speech on past widespread ice age conditions. He proposed that nearly all of northern Europe and Britain had once been covered by ice. And he subsequently found evidence for his theory in New England. Others eventually uncovered additional evidence. In 1839, United States geologist Timothy Conrad 1803-1877, discovered evidence of polished rocks, striations, and erratic boulders in western New York. 
supporting Agassiz's theory that Ice Age glaciation was worldwide. In 1842, the first attempt to explain the Ice Ages using an astronomical connection was made by French scientist Joseph Hamar, 1797-1862. He proposed that the Ice Ages were the result of the 22,000-year precession of the equinox. A natural movement of the Earth's axis that causes the seasons to switch over thousands of years. In other words, the current summer months would become winter months and vice versa. Who was Paul A? Sippel and how is he associated with the concept of the wind chill factor? The Antarctic explorer Paul A. Sippel, 1908-1968, coined the term in his 1939 dissertation. Adaption of the explorer to the climate of Antarctica. Sippel was the youngest member of Rear Admiral Richard Byrd's, 1888-1957, Antarctica expedition. 1928 to 1930 and later made other trips to the Antarctic as part of Bird's staff and for the US Department of the Interior assigned to the US Antarctic Expedition Sippel later conducted experiments using a container of water subjected to specific temperatures and wind speeds to see how fast it would freeze he also served in many other endeavors related to the study of cold climates. Who first formed the theory about the greenhouse effect? Irish physicist, mathematician, and chemist John Tyndall, 1820-1893, who succeeded Michael Faraday. 1791-1867, as the superintendent of Britain's Royal Institution. Began conducting research in radiant heat in 1859. He soon concluded that water vapor was vital for holding in warmth in the Earth's atmosphere and that other gases, such as carbon dioxide and ozone, also played a role. He proceeded to play with a number of calculations. Changing the amounts of these gases in his formulas to discover what the results would be. Tyndall concluded that increasing a gas like carbon dioxide would have significant effects on the climate that we now call global warming. Why are radio transmissions weaker at night than during the day? At night, of course, much less light is entering the atmosphere. Which means that less ionization is occurring and fewer electrons are available for radio waves to bounce off of. The result is that radio transmissions are weaker. Who were the first people to successfully forecast a tornado? U. S. Army officers Ernest Fabush and Robert Miller were the first to correctly predict a tornado would form on March 25, 1948. 
recognizing that weather patterns in central Oklahoma were very similar to those that had occurred a few days earlier when a tornado hit Tinker Air Force Base. Fawbush and Miller told their superiors and a decision was made to warn residents about the possible threat. A tornado again hit the Tinker Base a few hours later. Can the ozone hole be healed? Yes. While the latest figures represent an increase in the ozone hole size over previous years. There is some good news, compared to the 1980s, the hole is expanding more slowly. If we continue to reduce pollutants, the expansion may eventually stop and be reversed. Scientists believe that, if this happens, it will take about 50 years for ozone levels to return to natural levels. <laughs>